In this video, I'd like to cover additional AI features which are provided by Microsoft for Power BI Desktop. So in one of the prior videos, we covered already Quick Measures and the Copilot feature there. So one more time, if we click on Quick Measure here, there are a few options which are already available by default, which allow us to quickly create DAX expressions without actually knowing all the code behind it. And next to that, we also have suggestions with Copilot in here, this one, which allows us to write uh, some kind of normal question and then Copilot tries to convert this into a DAX expression and also shows us a output value in here. Now, this feature, as I said before, is only available if it is enabled in the tenant settings of Power BI. So you need to go to your Power BI admin and ask him or her to enable it. Now, so far, so good. Now, next to those, there are also additional AI features, but which are not referring to DAX directly, but rather to the visualizations itself. So let's cover these. Let's actually close this for now, and then let's have a look. We can find them, actually, if we go inside the home ribbon and just take a look at all the default visuals available. And as you can see here, there's also, if you scroll down, the AI visuals part. So these four visuals we have. So beside there, also Microsoft decided to actually show them into insert here quite uh, prominently here because you can see it directly in here and also select all of these on your canvas. Now let's get started with these. The first one is the Q&A visual. The Q&A visual, also keep in mind, if you hover it over it, you see that it also gives you a little explanation. But by default, if you select it, then the visual itself allows us to ask questions about the data. It also proposed a few questions in here. And then based on the question, it tries to generate a visualization for us. So as an example, I would like to see what is the total amount of sales for, or let's say by country, right? By uh, customer country. So I need to specify this because in my data, it's called customer country. So I need to spell it correctly. Sorry for that. Country, like that. Okay, this one here. So that is my question. And if I then tick this option, which is now here proposed, click on it, you see that by default, I get a bar chart in here, which is this one. As you can see here, I got my customer countries and I can see it as a bar. Now this can be further adjusted because we can tell Power BI what kind of visualization we want. As an example, if I say as and now table, and then I press enter or tick this option here, you see that now it converts the bar chart into a table. And you can also try it with other ones, let's say in this case as map, because it's a customer country, so it allows us actually to plot a kind of map. So I'll take this option here, and you see that by default I get a map with the customer countries and with the bubbles as the size for the total sales. That also works quite well. The only thing which I was not able to do or achieve, maybe you can give it a go and maybe you find a solution, was to convert it into the new Azure map. That was not recognized by Power BI when I typed in Azure map, but Maybe you find a solution. If so, please write it also in the comments. So having said that, okay, now we have this. And if you say, okay, now I'm good to go with that, then you can simply convert this to a normal visual. Because as long as you do not convert it, if I just click away, then it remains a Q&A visual. Meaning I can go there at any time and ask a different question and see complete different visual based on the question I rise here. Now. That's this one, but now let me convert this into a standard visual. You simply need to click there, tick this option, and now you can see it's a default visual which you're already familiar with. But also I cannot change it into a Q&A visual anymore. It's just a default visual. So if I want to have a Q&A visual back, I need to go again to Q&A in here and create another one. So that's how Q&A works. Let me just first make this smaller like this, and then let's have a look at the next one, which is the key influences. The key influences visual allows us to analyze a specific, uh, well, metric, for instance, the total sales or other kind of KPI we have based on various factors in our data. So because it's AI driven, what Power BI is doing is actually analyzing the data and then tries to figure out what are actually the key drivers for this specific KPI we want to analyze. So to do that, just click on this. And now we have the bar. Let me make this maybe a little bit bigger just for now. And now we need first need to specify, okay, what do you want to analyze in here? So you can either use on object here, then click on add visual or add data. Or of course, you also can use these options here inside. 
So for me, again, I want to use the total sales. So I go with my uh, total sales number here, drag this to the analyze section, either here or here, drop it. And now, of course, we need to add some few, um, well, variables to explain it. So also you can specify you want to analyze whether it increases or decreases. That's also you can choose up here. Let me choose decrease for now. Let's just see. And then we can drag specific fields. Let's go there, down there to our orders table and see what we have. Now, for instance, I could say maybe the category gives us some information. So drag category inside. And then drag a few additional fields because most often it's not that easy just to analyze it by one field. And sometimes Power BI needs a few additional fields to try to figure out, okay, how is this related? So for that, let me just drag a few fields and see what Power BI comes up with. So let's drag on ship mode as well, drop it here. And then also use, let's say, custom country, drag this in here as well. And then drag maybe also from the supplier and see, oh, we already got this, but let's also drag supplier name and also drag it here. So you can see that it did some analysis and now it figured out, okay, if the supply name here, for instance, is this one here, then by average, the total sales was around one buck less, right? And the same is true here for if the customer country. So if the customer is coming from Poland, then obviously on average, we made uh, $900 less sales and so on. So you can see here, these are the relations which Power BI figured out based on the fields we have here for the KPI we want to analyze. That's how that works. What you can also do is you can take a look at up there. There's also top segments, which sometimes Power BI is able, also able to recognize um, and convert your data into different segments. This here doesn't look too good. We only found one segment, but as I said before, it's something you have to try out with, right? There is no right or wrong. Just use your data, uh, put it in the visual, and then see what Power, Power BI comes up with and can derive from the data you have. So that's how this key influencer works. So also not very difficult, just decide what you want to analyze and then put in some data for Power BI to create some kind of relation to that. So also let us make, make this smaller for now and also then drag this down to have more space. So that's the second one, the key influencer. The third one is the decomposition tree. So let's have a look at that. Click this option first and then you can see in the template itself already, it is a kind of tree structure. Meaning again, we have to analyze um, or actually give it a certain kind of metric, which is the main focus for us in this visual. So one more time, if I say for me, this time it is, let's say from the measures, not the total sales, but let's go with total profit, right? I'm interested in profit. So let me drag this in analyze either here or again on object, then put it here directly. And now we have a total profit in here, which is around half a million in this case. So next we need to explain it the same way actually as it worked for the key influencers, we need to drag the explained by. So let's say I'd like to explain this by um, here, the categories I have. So I can drag categories into explain by, drop it there. And you see that now we have a little plus icon here. That just means that I can click on the plus icon here and then I can specify, um, am I interested in the highest value, in the lowest value or expand to all categories. Let me show you the difference. If I take highest value and click this option, then you see that it shows me all the categories. So how they contributed to the total profit and also because I choose highest value, I have this blue line, which is highlighted to cheese because this is the highest value or the highest contributor to our total profit. If I click on this X here, up here, I make it small again. And the same way is true. If I click there, go to lowest value, right? Then now we can see that the blue line is to the lowest value. I still see all the values in here. And the only difference between uh, the other one is simply if you go to category itself, you do not highlight anything. You still show all the data. And you can do this further, right? You can derive further. So starting from total profits, you see it by category and next you can drag the next field. So for instance, I choose now the ship mode, drag the ship mode in here like this. And now we can see you got pluses everywhere. So you can drill down further if you want. So now you could say for cheese, let me take this option and say, I'd like to see the ship mode, right? Or the highest or lowest value. Let's go to the ship mode by default. You can see those. So DHL, DHL Express and UPS. And you can see if you sum those values up, you get derived, you derive this value here, 108,000 and so on. And you can also, this is interactive, right? So you can click for instance on drinks and you see that now it moves to drinks. If I click on fruits, it uh, goes to fruits and so on, right? So that's how this visual works. And of course you can also um, uh, drill up in this case, if you just cross this out, you see that now you get the process in here, so you make it smaller again. 
So also, um, from my point of view, a really cool visual because it allows us to analyze, okay, where is actually this value coming from, right? And then you can drill in and not only you, but also the report consumer can do this. So you can give him or her the option to do this and then he or she can click and see what actually is, uh, well, the relation between the, the values. So that's the third one. And let me also show you the last one. Let me make this smaller again. And for the last one, the narrative visual first needs to have some visuals on the canvas in here. So you can't start with a narrative because the narrative, what is actually doing is just analyzing your current report page. And then based on what it is on the report page, it tries to write some kind of exec executive summary. That's what it does. So um, because we already have some visuals in here, we can give it a try. So let's click on narrative summary. So narrative here. And then you specify, do you want to have Copilot, which is going to be preview, but which requires a certain license, or you want to have custom, which allows you to have a more a specific customization. So we'll go with custom for now, click on custom, and you see that it generates here the summary. As you can see here that at and so on, USA had the highest sum and so on and so on. USA accounted for 90% of some sales and so on and so on. So that's actually the text which it generated. And let me also select maybe all of this and make it a little bigger. So hopefully you can see this like that. Okay. So that's basically what the narrative summary did. So it analyzed what we have on the screen based on the visuals. And then it writes some kind of key points, which it considered to be the most important ones. And the interesting thing here, and that's why we choose custom, because we can also edit this further. Right, you can write here any kind of text. You can delete text if you want. It's like a text visual, like a text box, right? You can also add that, uh, add additional context. And for instance, you can also add uh, additional values in here. So for instance, if I would say the total sales was, and then I can go under value here, this option, I can tick this. And here I just need to write what I want to calculate. Well, for me, it's total sales. So type in total sales. And here, let me tick this option and that also give this a name. So the total sales, I name it for now, just TS. That's the abbreviation for it. And if I click on add, now you see that now I added here my total sales figure, which is 1.35 million, right? This one here. So that's how this uh, narrative visual works. It's kind of similar to the text box in Power BI, but it by default generates uh, an executive summary of all the visuals and the data we have on our current report page. And we have the option to, um, well, extend this to add additional information or to also remove certain things if we think that's not important. So that's it actually for all the AI features based on the visuals we currently have in Power BI. So as I said, we have AI regarding calculations. We've seen this in quick measures or the co-pilot feature, but also in visuals. And these are the four which currently are provided by Microsoft and Power BI directly. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Give it a try yourself. And as always, thanks so much for watching.